Hello everyone, welcome to the JCast Network. I'm your host, Aaron Herman. We had the opportunity to attend the Jewish Future Conference and hear from leaders in the community about how technology is transforming the way we learn and connect. Let's take a closer look. Jewish education is at a crossroads right now. They're trying to figure out that next big thing to help enhance uh, the classroom experience. And uh, you're doing something really interesting with SmartForce. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, for all of my lessons, everything is really based off of a smart board. The students have the source material in front of them, but everything's very visual. Everything's very interactive. It's no longer just reading the text, but it's about interacting with the material, about looking at the board and being able to differentiate the different verses, to be able to see really in a very clear way um, what the text is saying. You know, for example, if you're learning a piece of Talmud, you're able to look at it on the board and you're able to highlight what's the question, what's the answer, what does Rashi say, and just making um, learning more accessible to, to more students. And you know, the smart board in a lot of schools sometimes is almost like use like a paperweight. They don't know how, yeah. they don't, they don't know how to use it correctly. And you have yeah. this like, now it's like $15,000 or maybe less now for a smart board. Um, how have you seen the smart board um, sort of enhancing the classroom experience? So it's really about making it interactive. It's about the smart board enables you to build activities where the students are supposed to come to the board and really be a part of the experience. You know, for, for example, like I was explaining to them about, let's say, how the, the C splits. And it's not, we just don't just watch the picture of it, but they come to the board and they press the button and then the, the, the C splits. And it's just about using the, the tools that are there to, to make it interactive. It's not about being just a projector. And if you're using it as a projector, that's great. But it's about really getting the students up to the board and, and participating in the activities. And one of the challenges in Jewish education was there, were, there wasn't, there's not like anything out there specifically for Lumari Kodesh. Um, yeah. And that's like the, I guess, what people are trying to think. Like, how can we now harness that power now? Um, so there's a database that has um, like a th thousands of smart, smart board lessons that people have made so people could use that. And again, it's just about taking your creativity as a teacher and, and innovating it and making it, students are going to all have um, iPads or tablets and really just about enabling them to become a part of the learning experience. What excites you about Jewish education? What excites it's exciting. I don't know. You, you could relate it to our life. Um, it's just to read the text and to be able to say, "Oh my God, that applies to my life." What happened so many, you know, thousands of years ago really can be happens in our daily lives. You know, for, I was I was teaching my students about Rachav and uh, spies, and like a similar situation happened with the Secret Service. And again, like every as when I mentioned in class, every single one of my students are like, "Oh my God, that's happening right now." So again, it's just about harnessing the, the tools that our, our students are familiar with. They're all familiar with technology and enabling them to, to use what they like in order to learn Judaic studies. Birthrighters All Next is at the forefront of innovation. And uh, one of the difficulties now is, is going to where they are. Get, go, getting to your alumni, being uh, a magic for a number of trips, um, seeing the, the kids just want to connect. What is Birthright doing now that is innovative? I think one of the things that we're doing that's innovative is we're actually uh, working to empower the people on the ground to do the real hard work of uh, connecting with participants of TRIPS. That is to say, um, there are people out there, people who are working in federations and grassroots organizations and JCCs and synagogues and all sorts of people, uh, people who are just doing it on their own, who don't necessarily have the uh, infrastructure to support them to do the really hard work uh, that it takes to uh, engage with young adults who've come off of birthright trips. So we think we're being innovative by working with those people so that we can actually create wholesale change on the ground rather than working one at a time with community by community. We can work uh, with everyone all at once and really raise the common denominator for the entire Jewish world. Let's talk about uh, so social networking because obviously, you know, when you have these social networks trying to manage that, trying to understand how to connect, how do you connect to your participants? 
are a lot of different ways you connect and I, I think you really hit the nail on the head when you said meeting them where they are. One of the things that we're doing, you know, you, you talk a lot about technology and new media and social media at a conference like this, but one of the things that we found to actually be most effective in reaching Birthright alumni is the personal connections, especially the personal connections they develop on the trips, right? So um, you use all of these tools as, as platforms to reach these people, but you do a lot of what, you know, we're talking a lot in the sector today about network weaving and you do a lot of tapping into the people who can tap into people who can tap into other people and really what you're focusing on and using these tools for is building the personal relationships and the personal connections that are required to build up the community. Right, it's as, uh, as our CEO Morley Levin said just a few minutes ago on stage, the cloud and the social networking uh, uh, implementation is really just a tool for a larger purpose. The purpose is to create face-to-face -face interactions, to really create a sense of real substantive community where people are. It's not enough necessarily to say, oh, we've tweeted at someone there, we've built a community. It's really about how can we use things like Twitter, how can we use social networking to really get people to uh, connect on a fundamental level in the real world. What is your vision for next in the next two years? Vision for next in the next two years? I think the vision for next in the next two years is to really create a, a Jewish world in which all the people who are doing the work uh, that it takes to uh, um, connect participants with opportunities, with organizations, with learning, with each other, uh, where it's not in the hands of a select few, but everyone has those resources and those, uh, those tools. Everyone's able to uh, take advantage of the fact that Birthright exists, that there's this population that's uh, come back enthusiastic and excited about something, and that um, being able to uh, capitalize on that energy and enthusiasm is uh, really for everyone. It's not just for the people uh, who you know, were on the bus. It's for the people who are waiting for them when people come home. Um, yeah, I, I think in addition to what Rafi has said, that we're doing a lot of learning at Next about the demographic that we're working with. And if we can be doing a lot of the learning, a lot of the experimentation in the next few years, um, then we can really be helping the community at large learn what it takes to connect with and empower the, this particular demographic. Jewish education is evolving. And through innovation, we're seeing dramatic changes in the way we connect in classrooms. What does innovation mean to you? So today we see people taking a hammer to the classroom because we know the classroom is not enough to nurture a Jewish soul. So instead we have congregations that work with the Jewish Education Project like Community Synagogue of Rye. And yes, they put a hammer to the classroom, but instead they build a model, and I'll just give you a great example, where fifth and sixth graders are in Havarot, small groups of about 10 children, and every week they meet in each other's homes. And you say, okay, what are they doing there? Their teacher, or you'd say their guide, talks to the kids about what are their questions, what are they passionate about, and each week the learning speaks to the questions of these young people. And frankly, sometimes if the learning takes them to the mall, to the yoga studio, but it's guided by the interests and passions of the young people rooted in Jewish tradition, and technology is there next to those deep relationships. They get Skype Hebrew every week, and the family is important, we know that. And so part of this model, it's called Havara. The families meet together twice a month in the synagogue, celebrate Shabbat, celebrate the holiday. What's that about? That's young Jewish people growing up and saying, there are people who care about me, there are people who know me. And when I actually have a question in my life, I don't just turn to the internet, I get to turn to Jewish tradition to help me figure out how to live my life. That's innovation. And you know, with technology uh, coming into the classroom, it's important to have the online and offline version. Um, talk about the importance of that. I think one thing we hold is that you can't just say we're going to build it on the net. There has to be the link between on land. What are those relationships that are happening and online? And just an example, at, at a Community Synagogue of Rye, these children receive Skype Hebrew tutoring every week. The person who tutors them knows them from being in person. So when the Skype tutor calls in and sees the parent in the home, the child's room, 
they already have a face-to-face -face -to relationship. So I think today innovation means our children need to be known and cared about, and they need quick, savvy connections for, for what their questions are. That can be the net, but it's got to be founded in those relationships. As you can see, technology is transforming the way we learn and connect. This is Aaron Herman, and thank you for watching.